What's up, everybody? Welcome to a uh, hump day edition of Morning Scone. Although it doesn't feel like it. It feels like a Monday after a holiday. Presented by? Boudreaux. Bloody Mary mix, margarita mix. We are in transit today. Uh, Drew heading to the doctor. You can hear the cough. No bueno. Um, <clears throat> so we are... Uh, few weeks out from heart surgery for Drew and if you know the whole thing is that if he gets sick at all then that could end up postponing the surgery so that's why we're going to get him tested this morning we'll run the panels on the little guy and see what's up so that's a bit of a bummer so here's hoping that um, you know it's nothing significant that they can still keep us on our, our track to have surgery on the 18th so but we'll see in the meantime He's coughing a lot. This, you know, normal gunk this time of year. So, anyway, hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas. Um, the in-transit shows are always kind of interesting. You know, uh, the shorter shows, and I don't really get to focus in a ton on comments because I'm focusing on the road. Um, try to say my good mornings as I can whenever I get to uh, a red light or stop sign or something. So, big news yesterday, obviously, though, in the sporting world, um, locally anyway, uh, was LSU got a commit from a five-star cornerback out of California, Elias Ricks, his kid's name, um, for 2020, so for next year's class. So he's a high school junior right now, but he'll be, you know, assigned next year. Um, it's always a little leery whenever you get guys that early because you're like, okay, can you hold them for, you know, for a year, for a full calendar year? But if a kid commits that early, clearly there's something he saw that he liked a lot, uh, which is awesome, especially when you're able to get a guy from California um, this kind of goes to show you just further underscores what LSU's built and the reputation they've built uh, in the secondary. The uh, I would say the biggest thing to watch with that, and again, if you're going to ask me um, how does he compare, that's just that's not what I do. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, you know, when I woke up on Christmas morning, if you'd asked me who Elias Ricks was, I'd have been like the former ambassador to Spain no clue like no idea um but um <laughs> came to a red light Houston Carly good morning from the deer stand <laughs> uh, place I'll never be that's funny though but good morning thanks for watching there um but anyway huge it, that is a big get for a lot of reasons obviously with Elias Ricks I want to come back to that deer stand point too in a second here um because similar to Cardell Thomas last year, you, know, you got the big five star early to commit, and he kind of became the Pied Piper of your class. Right. The same thing happened back in 09 with uh, Wait. class of 08 with uh, with Russell Shepard as well. Or oh, not class of 09, it was throughout that 08 season. Uh, Russell Shepard kind of became that guy as well. He committed early, and then he kind of became the you know the Pied Piper. Just went became kind of LSU's best recruiter. So that's cool. Uh, so Houston Carly uh, is there in the deer stand. You know, me and Terrio talk all the time. Terrio and I talk all the time. About, um... Uh, we, we always end up somehow talking about hunting and, and things of that nature. I guess, and this is kind of my point, right? If you're in a deer stand and you're watching me on your phone, how intense really is this hunt or are you just waiting for something to walk near you so you could shoot it from long distance with a very sophisticated weapon well, don't get me wrong I'm not a PETA guy I'm, I very much endorse your right to, to, to shoot animals that I can eat but there's just something about the whole the skill of the hunt nah man like when, when Indians had to like find a, a tree that had fallen and like take a rock and sharpen it against metal or whatever and like carve their own bows and their arrowheads out of stone and then get like precision accuracy or there was like a buffalo and they had to like run up on the buffalo and like you know, sneak up on the buffalo and then jump on its back and like kill it that way like that's hunting you know what I mean like that's hunting 
sitting in your deer stand waiting for something to walk by so you could shoot it from 200 yards away with a gun with a scope and all that guy. That's just not really hunting. That's sitting and waiting for something to walk within your shooting range. That's all. Well, and now that I've significantly pissed off every hunter who watches, uh, probably ensuring that I'll never have any of you watch again. Uh, yeah, good morning. Merry Christmas. Um, oh, Drew's not. Hey, you okay, bud? You okay? You want to say hi to everybody? You want to say hi? I would not let you see him, Reg. Anyway. So, uh, Locked on LSU podcast returns today. Uh, AFR at 3 o'clock, of course. We'll talk plenty about the uh, the commitment from the kid out of, out of uh, California. Definitely we'll start talking more about the Saints. You know, the uh, Saints and, uh, and, and Panthers, kind of what they do. Uh, there was at least one report I saw that... Uh, the Saints are expected to start Teddy Bridgewater, which um, they should absolutely do, by the way. Um, I think we might have talked about this all in, um, you okay, bud? Oh, Struggling this morning. Um, we talked about this a little bit on, uh, on maybe on Christmas Eve's morning scone about should they rest guys or play guys against uh, the, the Panthers? My contention is you rest everybody. Like, you sit everybody that's of significance. Um, you let them play in an if-needed role. Uh, I know Drew Brees is like eight yards away from 4,000. You keep his 4,000-yard streak going. I think if you're Sean Payton, you go to Drew and say, hey, do, do you want this? Like, do you want to play a series and go you know, throw throw a, pat, you know, a screen pass on the first three downs so you know, there's no risk of you getting hit? Um, you, either throw, you either complete the screen pass, you throw it into the ground, you get your eight yards, whatever happens on that drive happens, and then you, then, you, know, you take a seat. I mean, if that's something Drew wants to do, I think you give him that, that luxury, but that's it. And then it's, it's Teddy Bridgewater's game. Uh, I would not play Mark Ingram or Alvin Kamara. Um, I would not play Mike Thomas. I would not play Cam Jordan. I mean, I wouldn't play anybody. Then again, some of those guys have to play because you only got a 53-man roster. So, but I mean, you could activate all the guys that have been inactive. You know, and the reason it's just like same thing we talked about with with Teron Armstead last week. It's, I mean, it's not hindsight if you if you talked about it before it happened. But my point with Armstead was, if if he's 90 percent, why play him? You know, like let him sit. You just got to win one of your next two. You win without him. He gets another month off, basically. You know, three weeks, and then the game week of the division around. It's like let him have that those extra three plus weeks to get like f- like fully a hundred percent ready to roll in a game that matters. Instead, you run him out there against the Steelers, and you end up winning without him. You know. Anyway, it sucks. What, well, bud? All right, we're at a red light, so we can say some good mornings now. Um, all right, I'll go quick. Andrew Bear, Brand Fowler, Houston Carly, Stephen Bro, Blaine Allen, Tyler Hales, Mark Allen, James Tyrone, Mike Sylvester, Houston Carly, Kyle Pierce, Everett Himmel, Robert Scott, Jennifer Allen, Andrew Bear, Dustin, Darren Gustin, Brant Fowler. What's up, man? Uh, let's see. Carrie Hughes, good morning. Trivia, good morning. Stephen Miller, Mark Demelin, good morning. Eric Sony, I hope I'm not blowing that. Mark, sorry. Deborah Todd, good morning. Sam Dixon, James Tyrone from Nashville. Thank you for the prayers. Craig Duga, uh, we will be getting a pregame with you and T-Bob for the Fiesta. Absolutely, Craig. So uh, T-Bob and I will be doing a pregame for Fiesta Bowl. Five, so New Year's Day, how about this? <laughs> Games at noon, so we start at 7 a.m. on New Year's Day, which means I have to be at studio about 6 a.m. on New Year's Day, which means I'll probably be waking up at 5 a.m. on New Year's Day. <laughs> Needless to say, I will not be hanging out with Seacrest ringing in the new year. Uh, uh, let's see. Sam Dixon, I'd probably be in my dear stand myself if not for this work thing. How about that? It is interesting how many people have to work today. I thought we'd be like, you know... All of it, but I, I don't mind doing the show on today on days like today. And the reason is because even people who have off today, most people are out and about. Like very few people are just sitting at home today. Um, you know, it's one thing like on New Year's Day where 
you're just sitting around watching bowl games all day. Um, like right now, there aren't many people on the street. We're heading to the doctor. There aren't many people out here, especially for you know, 7.45 in the morning. Um, you know, normally, you're, you'd be in the middle of people's commute. There's nobody out here right now. But, um, but like the rest of the day, when stores start to open, people go start returning clothes. They go out to eat for lunch or whatever. I mean, we, you know, these are always, you know, uh, busy show days. Um, especially when you get closer to... Uh, to games, so um, starting to get some some stuff from uh, fi- from uh, the other side of the Fiesta Bowl as well. With uh, Central Florida, I was reading the uh, the Orlando Sentinel last night, and they're um, Central Florida's talking some smack about how they're the faster team. And they respect LSU speed, but they're the faster team. And, uh, we'll see. It'll be interesting. See if LSU can show up and uh, put together sixty minutes of. Uh, quality football um <clears throat> but I do think and there's a lot of talk people always say about like you know bowl games bowl games are big for like momentum and they can sort of springboard you into the next season I don't know man I think I think that really is just um <clears throat> I'd like there's arguments for it both ways because it's worked both ways for LSU in the past like everyone will always point out 2010 right LSU goes and beats A&M in the Cotton Bowl in 2010, and then they had that great season in 2011, obviously, Uh, but, but that's, that's worked, you know, you go to 06, when LSU blew out Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl, or the uh, Sugar Bowl, and then that, you know, that sort of led LSU in 07, where they won the national championship, you know, so there's, I guess there's some truth to that, Um, you know, but I can also point out, like, look at 2014, LSU had a rough year, they went and lost the Music City Bowl to Notre Dame. In 2015, man, they started the season 8-0. You know, they were shot out of a cannon. Fournette was a Heisman finalist and all that stuff, or Heisman candidate, front runner, at that point. So, you know, I, I think that that argument can work both ways, man. Um, I guess I just don't put too much stock into it. I, but I think it definitely uh, shapes the mood of the off season. And, you know, you used to have National Signing Day in February that could offset that. So even if you lost a bowl game, you know, you wait a month and then National Signing Day rolls around. And if you crush it on Signing Day, then it, it's completely like reverse that narrative. Uh, you don't really have that anymore because of the the December signing period. So, like right now, LSU's riding this wave of like good vibes. Where, you know, the contrast would be you had the the uber disappointment of losing the A and M game the way you did. But that feels really kind of muted now by the way you finished on that on you know the early signing period and how great a class you got and you're still not done. Um, you know, so the bowl game could either con- you know continue that that momentum of those good vibes or you know or the other way if you lose it and you don't really have the the full uh, signing day in February to uh, to reverse that. All right, we're at the doctor. Hey Drew, you want to tell everybody bye? Mommy. Well, mommy just walked over there. You're right. But do you want to tell everybody on Morning Scone, bye? Boudreaux. Boudreaux, yes. Boudreaux. Drew wanted to remind you to go get Boudreaux, Bloody Mary Mix and Margarita Mix, right? Are you ready to go? Go see Dr. B. Well, Dr. B is in Paris, so we're not going to see Dr. B. We're going to see Dr. Bankston today, but we love Dr. Bankston too. Y'all have an awesome day. We'll see you for a Locked on LSU podcast and AFR a bit later. Say bye, Drew. Oh, he blew y'all a kiss. (laughs) That was cute. All right, see y'all later.